Should you become an aerospace engineer in 2021? That is the question that this video is going to try and help you answer. We're going to talk about the salaries of aerospace engineers. We're also going to talk about how off the US government is on their projections for aerospace engineering job opportunities. It is crazy how many job opportunities there are right now for aerospace engineers. We're also going to talk about educational requirements, but first, what is an aerospace engineer? Aerospace engineers design aircraft, spacecraft, satellites, and missiles. Aerospace engineers develop new technologies for use in aviation, defense systems, and spacecraft. Aerospace engineers usually specialize, and they usually focus in on aerodynamic fluid flow, structural design, guidance, navigation, or instrumentation and communication. An aerospace engineer might work for a company such as Lockheed Martin on the new F-35 Lightning II. SpaceX also hires a number of aerospace engineers to work on their spacecraft. There is a lot of demand for aerospace engineers in the defense industry and for new companies such as SpaceX and Blue Origin. So what kind of education do you need to become an aerospace engineer? Well, according to the Occupational Information Network, which is a branch of the United States Department of Labor, around 59% of aerospace engineers just have a bachelor's degree. Around 33% have a master's degree. So you definitely, a lot of, almost a third of aerospace engineers have education beyond a bachelor's degree. So you might need a master's degree to be really competitive in this occupation. So what kind of compensation can aerospace engineers expect in 2021? According to the Economic Research Institute, the United States tends to pay a little bit more than other countries. In 2021, according to the Economic Research Institute, the average base salary for an aerospace engineer in the United States was around 121,000 per year. In Australia, when converted to the United States currency, around 84,000 per year, and in Canada, around 77,000 per year. Within the United States, aerospace engineers have seen significant wage growth over the years. In the year 2000, the average base salary, not including overtime and other benefits for an aerospace engineer, was around $69,000 per year. This grew to $121,000 a year in 2020. This gives us an average yearly wage growth for aerospace engineers of around $2,500 per year, which is actually really strong wage growth. If we were to take this average yearly wage growth number, by 2025, the average base salary would be around 133,000, per year. And by 2030, the average base salary would be around 146,000 Per year. Aerospace engineering is actually one of the most lucrative types of engineering in 2020. Compared to other engineering fields, aerospace engineering is extremely lucrative. It is in the top five most lucrative types of engineering. It's really only beat out by petroleum engineering, nuclear engineering, computer hardware engineering, and really that's it. Of the 16 engineering fields that the government surveys every single year, Aerospace engineering is the fourth most lucrative. And experience does play a huge role in the compensation of aerospace engineers. A starting salary would probably be around the 10th percentile in terms of pay, which would put a starting salary for an aerospace engineer around 73,000 per year. Whereas someone that has a ton of experience in aerospace engineering, the top 10% of aerospace engineers earn more than 171,000 per year. Geography within the United States also plays a role in the compensation of aerospace engineers. The government actually found Washington DC tends to pay them the most, followed by Maryland, the state of Washington, Virginia, Texas. And a lot of these states have a lot of defense contractors in them. And defense contractors tend to pay a lot of money such as Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and SAIC. So that covers the compensation of aerospace engineers. They definitely do pretty well. What is the job market like? Is it challenging to get a job as an aerospace engineer? The first thing to understand is the aerospace engineering workforce is not the same size as some of the big engineering fields. Civil, industrial, and mechanical engineering have far larger workforces and they're far more employed than aerospace engineers. In 2020, there were about 60,630 employed aerospace engineers across the United States. And according to the government, the number of employed aerospace engineers has been falling for years. A little bit later in the video, we're gonna talk about why this might be the case and why this data might be a little flawed. But according to the government, in the year 2000, there was around 72,000 employed aerospace engineers. This hit a high in 2006 of around 86,000 employed. But since then, the number of employed aerospace engineers has been falling. 
And by 2020, they recorded 60,630 employed aerospace engineers, which is about 11,000 less than there were in the year 2000. The government is actually only predicting a 3% growth in the number of aerospace engineering jobs over the next 10 years. This means that by 2030, they're projecting around a little over 62,000 employed. So I looked at the number of aerospace engineering job postings across three different platforms, Indeed.com, Glassdoor.com, and LinkedIn. We found that on Indeed.com, there was around a little over 5,000 job postings for aerospace engineers. On LinkedIn, we found a little over 13,000 job postings. And on Glassdoor, there was a little over 24,000 job postings for aerospace engineers. Now, according to the government, there was a little over 60,000 employed aerospace engineers in 2020. Whereas on Glassdoor, there was over 24,000 job postings. This would actually show that there's actually a shortage of aerospace engineers in the US economy right now. The ratio between job postings and the number of employed is actually pretty crazy. Not many occupations are have a ratio that that is this severe. So usually the government is pretty on point with their employment forecasts, but they seem really off in this particular case. But before entering this occupation, there is a little bit of a warning. This occupation is very, very regional. The government actually releases where the employed aerospace engineers are across the United States. And the vast majority are in very specific places, specifically California, Texas, and Washington. In this map, the darker blue indicates a greater number of employed aerospace engineers. As you can see, California is the hot spot for this occupation. So that covers the job market for aerospace engineers. There's definitely a shortage going on right now that many people should definitely take advantage of if they're interested in this occupation. Another factor people like to consider when choosing a career is if their Myers-Briggs personality type matches up with the Myers-Briggs types found in a specific occupation. For aerospace engineering, the Myers-Briggs company actually found that the ENTJ, the commander, is the most likely type to become an aerospace engineer, followed by the INTJ, the architect, INTP, the thinker, and the ENTP, the debater. Notice that all four types are thinking over feeling. That's pretty much every engineering field. They tend to prefer, have a preference for thinking over feeling. So if you're interested in designing a new spacecraft for SpaceX, or maybe working for a defense contractor such as Boeing or Lockheed Martin, this could be the occupation for you. If you enjoyed this video, definitely also check out my electrical engineering video. This is also a great occupation to look into if you're interested in aerospace engineering. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.